And welcome back to Digital Trends Live. I'm Greg Nibbler. Thanks for joining us this Friday, which means it's time for another edition of Tech Briefs, where we recap some of the biggest stories in tech from the past week to make sure you know all the details you need to know about these stories. And uh, this week, I am joined by our guest co-host, Maya Schwader. Maya, hello. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Happy to be here. Well, let's talk about some tech. So there's a lot that's going on, a lot of battles happening this week. And uh, first off, oh let's goodness. talk about Uber and Lyft. As so many. I mean, it's just like tech showdown after tech showdown, soap operas. Uh, but with Uber and Lyft in particular, so just to kind of give the context, there's the AB5 law, which was set to go in effect in January, which essentially would make these two companies classify their drivers as employees instead of contractors, which would mean they're entitled to minimum wage and social security benefits and all of that. Uber and Lyft have been fighting this. And then Thursday, there was the, the deadline where they had to enforce it and Lyft threatened to pull out of California altogether for ride sharing. Uber was probably gonna do that. But then a judge came in at the last minute and offered a reprieve saying they have until October to kind of work this out. It's coincidental there's another ballot though in November, Prop 22, which would also allow for uh, the reversal of this law. How are you see this playing out? Like who's gonna win in this situation? Yeah, they've gotten till October, but uh, October is not that far away. It's August 21st now, right? Like, as I look at my wrist that doesn't have a watch on it, uh, they don't have that much time. Now, uh, I think I love the way that Wired described this when they were reporting on it. They said this was a brief but furious game of chicken, but it was a long buildup to this brief but furious game of chicken. Uh, drivers have been sounding the alarm on the employment practices of companies like Uber and Lyft for a while. There are some grassroots groups that have sprung up that have been getting a lot of attention now talking about how you know they need a minimum wage, they need benefits, they need a union because they're being basically left high and dry by these companies. Now, the thing about Uber and Lyft and especially Uber is these companies aren't profitable. Yeah, they're valued very highly, but every single Uber ride that you take is actually subsidized in some way by the company. They've also got these other ventures like Uber Eats, which also aren't profitable right now. And you think that in a pandemic when everyone's ordering food and can't go out to restaurants, this would be the time for something like Uber Eats to shine. And it's just still not profitable. So these companies are operating on a nice edge. They've got all these drivers that are furious at them over how they've been treated. And now we've got this situation of, well, how should they classify these drivers? And these companies really have zero incentive to try to actually bring all these drivers. I think there was an estimate that they've got 50,000, Uber has 50,000 drivers in California alone, and it's one of their biggest markets. They really have zero incentive to bring these people on. As full-time employees, they likely can't afford it. This would involve you know, paying them some sort of salary, healthcare, vacation benefits. But the thing that these drivers are saying is we really can't survive without these things. There's been a lot of studies about how much money drivers for these companies actually make. These Uber and Lyft will claim, oh, you know, it's an average of $25 an hour, which sounds great. And there have been some studies, particularly one in BuzzFeed that was done several years ago talking about, yeah, okay, they maybe average about 25 bucks an hour if they drive for a, you know many hours a week. But that's not taking into account gas, tolls, insurance, maintenance on their cars, you know, having to clean up after maybe right. a sick passenger or someone who leaves trash around. It's, it's a big problem. And the thing is, we actually know what it looks like when these companies leave a city. Ask anyone who lives in Austin, Texas. The companies pulled out of Austin, Texas several years ago, and they had to scramble to figure out what to do. The genie's kind of out of the bottle. No one really wants to go back to not having these companies around. Right. Yeah. I mean, I remember pre pre this taxi service, at least here where, where I am, was not the greatest. There weren't enough of them. Yeah. It sucked. Uh, you know, it was expensive. This, so, so it is. It I was think, inconvenient. Yeah. yeah it, it wasn't great. Right. Yeah. And the drivers were crazy. So, well, I guess that hasn't changed that much either. But but regardless, sorry, Uber and Lyft drivers. I should not have said that now. Anybody, anytime I take one, I take it back. Uh, but Uber and Lyft, uh, that is their battle that's going on. So you can read more about that at Digital Trends. But yeah, definitely something that, like you said, October's not that far away. I keep forgetting. Time has no meaning anymore. But uh, nonetheless, time. that is where we're at with that one. Right. OK, going on to another fight. Um, this one keeps on expanding. So we've got Epic Games versus Apple with Fortnite still not being in the iOS store or Google Play, but Google's kind of 
gone to the side of this thing. Apple's really been at the forefront of this. And I think it's because so many companies are mad at Apple for their App Store policies, which are the same as Google, but still. Th th which is this, that Apple takes 30% of the revenue from in-app purchases. And there's a lot of people that have complained about it, but really I don't think anybody's taking a stand quite like Epic Games, where they went straight at them with their uh, 1980 Fortnite video mocking oh, yeah. Apple. But they were ready yeah, for this. I mean, straight at them. Right? Yeah. And then with a lawsuit ready to go. But Apple, I think they did something this week that really shows their power, which is they started threatening to then take Epic Games itself out of there, which could allude to taking Unreal Engine backed software and other games out of it, which could completely mess up Epic Games. And I, I think it's a bold move that Apple made. This this is another crack in Apple's shield or it's it's dominance I should say I don't know if Epic Games is necessarily going to win this fight but this is an, an, another chink in the armor shall we say it sort of is coming off of the back of this big tech hearing this big tech showdown that we saw in Congress a couple of weeks ago uh, where Apple was Tim Cook was brought before the Senate Judiciary Committee over Apple's App Store practices over exactly this question of this 30% charge over whether they have too much market power. Now, Apple's argument at the time was, well, this is industry standard. You know, we're just following the industry standard without really mentioning that they kind of set the industry standard. The App Store is so dominant in the mobile app space and the mobile game space in particular. If you want access to the iPhone market, you have to go through the App Store. That's the only way that any of this is going, that, that you're going to reach your audience, shall we say. Um, right. Now, we've got Epic, which is the host of the hugely popular game Fortnite. And if people can't get their Fortnite, that's going to be a huge loss of revenue for everyone involved. This isn't the first company that's come for Apple in this way, but they're the biggest so far. And it's bringing up this problem that's been in the industry for a while of, why is it 30%? Why did Apple set it like this? And the honest answer was, well, because they could, right? Right. Yeah, and that's and and that's it. You know, they're kind of the standard bearer for all of that. So, um, again, a lot that you can read into that too at digitaltrends.com. And I know with tech beasts, we have to go fast. And it looks like we're somehow we ran out of time. But there is another uh, another thing I just want to encourage people to check out, and that's with SpaceX. It's a little bit of a lighter story, but they had their 100th launch, successful. Um, Super you know, cool. Setting more Starlink satellites up. Super cool stuff. So that part's fun. Space is still cool, but we'll see what happens with all these battles uh, between these tech companies. Definitely a lot shaking out with that. And I think we'll, a lot will change in the next couple of months. But Maya, Absolutely. as always, great to talk to you and, uh, and get your insight on all of this. And uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thanks for having me.